Hello, hello, hello again. It's me, Janar. Welcome to my channel. Today, I am with you with an interesting topic. Today, I'll be talking about how I became a pilot. I'm shooting this video on my balcony. That is really amazing day in Dubai. It's cool, nice, and still we have a couple of months in front of us that we can enjoy Dubai. Don't be surprised if you hear some birds are singing behind and also if you hear car engine noises. I'm apologizing in advance, but I really wanted to record this video in my balcony. I'll start talking about myself. Yeah, as I told you before in my previous videos, I am from Turkey. I was born in Izmir in 1989. After finishing my primary and high school education in Izmir, Turkey, I went to Eskişehir for studying university degree. I've graduated from avionics department and at the same time electrical and electronics engineering in Eskişehir in Anadolu University. Anyways, how I met with aviation is just started with university. And how I decided to be a pilot also started with my first job. After finishing my university, I've joined flight training department as a research assistant in Anadolu University. And meanwhile, I got curious about being pilot. I really like to be a pilot. I said, why not? And meanwhile, I was teaching in the university. I applied for the cadet programs to Turkish Airlines for being pilot. That was really long process, but I will talk about deeply how I become a pilot through cadet programs. The cadet program that I applied for Turkish Airlines was only for Turkish citizens. I don't know for other airlines, but most of the airlines are asking nationality for the cadet programs. What they're also asking is they're asking English proficiency. This English proficiency can be obtained through various examinations or they can make an assessment. It depends on the company. For in my case, I had to get a TOEFL result to apply for Turkish Airlines. After obtaining your English proficiency paperwork, the next step was the DLR examination. DLR exam is an exam designed by Germans. Actually, DLR means German Aerospace Center. In this examination, your skills like memory, abstract reasoning, psychomotorics, physics, maths, they all have been tested by this exam and Turkish Airlines was applying this exam for all cadets. Long story short, I've joined this test as well. If you are curious about the other examination, okay, I'll drop a link here so you can see what kind of examinations I'm talking about. After finishing DLR, the next step was group interview. In this group interview, there was a psychologist and she was asking us a questions and she wanted to check how we are doing as a team and how was individuals performance based on teamwork that was really challenging because that was the thing you don't know what should you do you're just being yourself but at the same time you're curious am i doing well am i doing wrong for instance during dlr if you miss the item if you cannot make it Obviously, obviously you understand what is wrong with that. So you, next time you can work on that. But when it comes to group interview, you don't know anything about it. If you are eliminated from this process, actually you don't have any clue what happened. Okay, long story short, I just passed this as well. The next step was to board review. You cannot imagine how stressful it was. And think of it, that was literally the last step. If you succeed in this interview, then you will get a seat as a cadet in Turkish Airlines. And that was putting lots of pressure on future cadets. Anyways, during this interview, I've been asked a couple of questions regarding aviation, my profession, if I'm gonna make this job. They didn't ask anything technically, uh, but they wanted to learn if I really like to be a pilot. Questions like, are you okay in the future you will get married you will have kid but you're not gonna be at home for 15 days do you think that you can make this job can you um, survive under high stress condition if your captain behaves bad if you see something wrong with the captain how would you react literally in the last assessment you have been checked by everything hr team was there flight 
department was there and also psychologist was there so imagine seven eight people are there to check each single second of your interview that was really stressful anyways and i've just joined this interview i passed it that was i was like yeah i got a seat in turkish airlines i was so excited speaking of being a cadet in turkish airlines i would like to give a little bit information about flight trainings okay i got acceptance letter but i didn't know what am i gonna do next so let me give you some examples there are basically two types of flight training system one of them is modular and the one of them is integrated one what i have done is integrated one what is the difference in between i will explain integrated training is the training where cadet joins a flight academy and finish his training or her training within 18 months and you get one license at the end of the training which is cpl you don't go for ppl then ir then night qualification then multi-engine you don't do this you start you begin in the whole training at once now let's talk a little bit about modular training Modular training is good for individuals who is working somewhere else at the same time they want to take their flight training because in this kind of flight training whole block is divided into smaller blocks like first of all you apply for PPL then you take your training then you got your PPL license after getting PPL license you can fly the airplane and you can build some flying hours with you and after that you can go for IR training after IR training you can go for night IR and you can go for multi-engine flying you don't have to follow exactly the same order but what you need to do is just you need to get all qualifications which take you to final step which is CPL this option is good if you don't have money and you are saving at the same time you want to join as a flight training program you can decide the pace of the training if you want to finish it in one year 15 months two years is up to you whereas in integrated training you should continue with the speed that set for you you don't have any other option you have to follow that that's why in integrated training you cannot work somewhere else you have to dedicate all of your time for this job that's why i had to resign from my job as a research assistant in the university turkish airlines gave us very short notice and they said okay you where you want to go back then we were lucky we had four options we could choose either of them so what was the options i had places from germany uk us and turkey that was really a tough decision for me i didn't know what to do imagine i was 24 years old i never been abroad such a long time so that was an option for me to go abroad and learn how to fly that was a tough decision that's why i was struggling to give a perfect decision for myself one part of myself wanted to go abroad learn how to fly and experience living abroad but other part of myself was a little bit mm, do not take risk stay in turkey learn how to fly in turkey and it was a really stressful week for me to decide what should i do at the end of the day i decided to go abroad because i decided you know what janar if everyone is doing it why why not you cannot do it so I trusted myself, I took a risk and I wanted to go abroad. That's how I decided my preferences. First, Germany. Second, US. Third, UK. And the last, Turkey. Out of my preferences, Turkish Airlines chose to send me to Germany. That was really nice for me because Germany was so close to Turkey and i was waiting from turkish airlines to hear something you know uh, any assignment date for flight training and i thought that little i will get at least three months because in my application form i wrote i have noticed period of three months and that's why i was okay relaxed but guess what happened one day i got an email they said congratulations you have been now accepted to turkish airlines flight academy you're going to germany in two weeks i was like what in two weeks i will resign I will complete my paperwork 
and I will go abroad and start flight training in two weeks. That was so fast. Next day, I immediately sent my passport to Turkish Airlines for them to get visa for me. And then I start resignation process from the university. Everything was super compressed. I had to do everything in two weeks. Anyways, it was a little challenging two weeks for me, but I have done everything. And then I joined Turkish Airlines Flight Academy in January 2014. That's how my flight training process started. That day, I was literally cadet for Turkish Airlines. You cannot imagine how I was happy. That was an amazing experience. Awesome. I still remember my first day when I got an email from Turkish Airlines saying that, okay, now you're cadet, officially a cadet for us. I flew to Germany on January 24 in 2014. After landing Germany, I was like, wow, where am I now? What am I gonna do? I was both stressed. I was enjoying my life. It was very complicated, really complicated. Okay, I would like to talk a little bit about our conditions in Germany. When I joined Turkish Airlines, actually, officially, I started working for Turkish Airlines, though I was still cadet, which means that we were covered by full insurance, we were getting minimum wage, and also we were getting paid some small amount of pocket money in Germany to survive. That was still good deal for us because I was single, I was doing nothing and I was getting minimum wage in Turkey and then our accommodation in Germany was covered by Lufthansa and we were getting paid 500 euros per month. Actually, this 500 euros in Germany as a student was more than okay. We were not paying anything for accommodation. We were not paying anything for transportation. So basically, all I needed to spend is for food. That's it. That was a good deal for us. We were staying all different accommodation. So that was also nice. I got a hotel room like a studio. I had my own kitchen. I was preparing my own food. I had my own desk. So I didn't need to go some study room to study. That was a perfect setup for me. I stayed in this kind of environment more than 18 months. And that worked really nice for us. I know in some flight training schools, you are sharing a room, but it's not good because, you know, some flying hours, you and your flatmate can have totally different flying hours. Someone can go at 3 a.m., 5 a.m., someone fly at night. So that's why it's nice to have separate room during flight training. And I give value Lufthansa for that. And of course, Turkish Airlines. Turkish Airlines ask conditions from Lufthansa. We flew from Istanbul to Frankfurt to take our flight training, right? The flight training school's name was Pilot Training Network. That flight school was belonged to Lufthansa. Right now, they have changed the name. That's why maybe you cannot find it if you Google it now. Anyways, I took my flight training in Pilot Training Network a company of Lufthansa. We stayed in Langen area in the hotel. There was approximately 20 minutes drive between flight training center and the hotel. That how I started living in Germany. After completing whole paperwork, finally, it was now time to study. Our training was in English and there were another four different Turkish Airlines cadets class in this flight training center. And at the same time, this flight training school was teaching individuals who decided to be a pilot. But our class was for only Turkish Airlines cadets. And our instructors were all around the Euro. They were basically working part-time and teaching us. They had all side jobs, like a pilot, working for an airline, this kind of jobs. That's why we were lucky. Our instructors were coming from industry. So we knew what's going on while we are taking training. First couple of months was actually for warming up. That was an introduction, how to fly and basics of the flight. That two months was preparing us to fly for the first time with a real airplane. That's why for the first two, three months, actually, we enjoyed a lot. 
that was not rushing you were not stressing yourself and you knew it after three months you're gonna fly and the good thing we have been told that we are gonna go flying to the united states for vfr as you can guess germany is not the best place when it comes to vfr flying due to weather conditions in germany uh, flight school that i've joined pilot training network ptn had an agreement with flight safety in florida so that they were sending their cadets to lufthansa for vfr flight training anyways long story short then we start taking theoretical lessons for two months after two months we got a short exam by the way i would like to talk a little bit about exams in flight training you cannot imagine how many times you have been tested each month we were having progress check if you cannot succeed this test you need to have one more one more if you fail then you need to repeat the module from the beginning again that's why during flight training it's a little bit stressful guys you had to you had to pass each exams and i don't even need to mention what flying each flight is an exam actually anyways after flying two months it was first time for me to move united states from orlando we had to go vero beach the vero beach was the place where we are gonna take our flight training actually vero beach is a very famous place for flights piper's airplane brand based in vero beach yes they produce their planes in vero beach and also flight safety was based in vero beach as well then finally we started taking official training for flying real airplanes we first played literally there was study but actually it was like a flight simulator we practiced english communication and finally that moment came we were flying to orlando with a 380 from frankfurt that was a little bit challenging to be honest because it was easy when it comes to practice on your own but when it comes to flying a real machine and communicating at the same time it was a little bit difficult so for the first two weeks uh, we have been taught about communication procedures vfr how should we fly, fly the airplane how can we report how should we enter the class delta airspace how we can exit class delta air, uh, airspace so what can what should we say this kind of things that was fun but at the same time that was scary and actually i got a really good trip from one of these instructors he recommended me to listen live atc live atc is a program that you can listen atc communications between pilots and atc controllers so you can get used to accent that's what i have done also we had walkie talkies so we could listen real communications around the airport actually it helped me a lot to improve my communication skills because in us communication is a little bit different than the rest of the world in the rest of the world communication is standard you know what you're gonna talk and they know what they're gonna expect but in US, it's not like this. They are talking as if they are in the real life. That's why there are lots of non-standard communication is going around. And if you are not familiar with the accent, you can struggle. And guess what? Every single student, regardless of where they are from, they were struggling. And ATC and flight school also were aware of that. That's why we have been giving communication classes before releasing to the airplane in that communication classes we had to practice communication like pretending like one of the student is a pilot the other student is a controller and also we had tests test was done by the flight instructor they were pretending like they are atc and we are student pilots so what we are gonna talk what we are gonna say this kind of tests one more time being a student in flight training is all about testing 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 i don't even remember how many thousand times i've been tested during flight training after two weeks now it was time for real fun yes i'm talking about flying a real airplane for the first time in our career there was a meeting in that meeting 
we've been introduced to our new instructors so we are gonna fly with them instructors were special because normally you are in united states and most of the instructors in united states are certified by faa but we were taking flight training under esa rules faa means federal aviation authority esa is at the same time european aviation safety agency so there were two different regulations we were following esa but we were in united states with faa rules are taking place that's why our instructors were certified by both faa and esa that limits the number of instructors available for us because not every instructor in flight safety school are certified for both anyways i remember my first instructor his name is jashim and this guy literally showed us how to land the airplane actually i remember my first conversation with him when i met with him for the first time i asked him ah oh, you are the guy who's gonna teach us how to fly he said no 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 i'm the guy who's gonna teach you how to land the airplane flying is the easiest part the challenging part was how to land the airplane guys he was absolutely right the most challenging part of flight training is not flying you learn how to fly easily but how to land is challenging part now let me talk a little bit about body system body system in flight training schools is one of the best thing ever it means that two cadets are flying in the plane with an instructor while one cadet is flying the other one is observing you that's really good thing because while you are flying it's very stressful and challenging environment sometimes you are so overloaded you cannot even understand single command or you're struggling to fly with the airplane you are not open to get any feedback from the instructor right but while you're sitting behind you can enjoy whole flight right because you are not trying to show off your skills and you are not trying to pass the examination you are not trying to perform well you just observe what's going on around you that's why it puts you in a place that you're not stressful so you can learn actually mistakes of the guy who is flying that's why body system worked really nice for all of us in some duties we were practicing landing in some duties we were practicing maneuvers after flying certain amount of time now it was time for first solo flight ever of course it's a challenging process to come there it's not that much flight though if you make around 14 flights now you should be ready for your first solo flights this first solo flight depends on your individual performance that's why it depends from individual to individual how many times you should fly before your first solo flight and that was really challenging for all of us to get used to airplane for landing anyways after practicing 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 somehow you will get familiarity with the airplane you know how to fly you know how to land now you're confident and it was first time for me to fly solo I got sweated a lot but once I land I forgot everything I literally made it I nailed it I flew an airplane for the first time in my life that was a milestone in my career then you know it helped me a lot to gain my self-confidence I had my self-confidence but once you see that wow you can really fly an airplane alone we stayed in United States three months and we flew all around Florida I must say that that was still one of the best experience when it comes to flying for me we were flying anywhere that we want flying in United States is amazing guys is you decide what you want to do they are flexible with everything if you know airspace structure if you follow the rules you can do anything you want we even made a touch and go in Orlando International Airport can you imagine Orlando International Airport and you are making touch and go with a Piper PA-28 while 747 is holding short you cannot do this in major airports in Europe we were going somewhere 
landing, refueling, so we can get a car for two hours. Then we were traveling the cities, we were eating in the nice restaurants. That was really nice because flight instructors were also nice to us. They were young. We were almost same age. You know, in United States, transition from training to airliner is difficult compared to the rest of the world. Once you graduated from flight school, you need to collect somehow flying hours. In that case, 1,500 hours. So most of the young graduates from flight training, they were joining as a flight training program as an instructor. After three months of flying, then now it was time to go back to Germany. Now it was time for ATPL theory study. ATPL theory phase was one of the most boring phase of flight training. Six months of non-stop studying for ATPL examinations. After ATPL theory, now it was time for IFR flying. For IFR flying, we flew to Rostock. Rostock is a small town, how can I say, in the middle of Berlin and Hamburg. There was a small town and it's called Rostock Lage Airport. We took our IFR training in Rostock Lage Airport. Actually, we were lucky because IFR training in Germany took place in most of the time in IMC conditions. That was a really nice opportunity for student pilots to fly IFR in real IMC conditions. That's why we didn't need to put this hood to, during IFR flight training because that was not simulated, that was real IMC condition. In this training, we learn how to make holding, how to fly holding, how to make an ALS approach, how to fly RNAV approach, how to fly VOR approaches. We had practiced lots of maneuvers, slow flies, and the airplane itself was nice. We flew there, DA-42, diamond airplane. In the first part of the training, I flew with Piper, and the second part, IFR training took place in Germany with Diamond airplane. After finishing IFR phase, now it was time for multi-engine. Multi-engine, in multi-engine we flew again Piper PA-44. That was a really nice airplane and we had two options. One traditional basic T instrument and the other one Garmin G1000. So we experienced really nice, really nice airplane for the first time flying real avionics and glass cockpit environment. But unfortunately, in multi-engine part, you're not flying a lot. Flying with multi-engine is limited for a couple of sectors only. And the thing is, you need to show your skill for license test in multi-engine airplane. That was not fair, right? You flew, I don't know how many sectors, with single engine, and you just switch an airplane for multi-engine, then you flew on a couple of flights. Then examiner comes and check you in that airplane where you didn't even fly more than five times. That was a little bit unfair, but that was okay. I passed my exam with multi-engine, and then finally, I got my CPL license. The license was CPL, credited with ATPL theory education. That means you got this commercial pilot license and also you got your ATPL lessons with yourself. It means that once you start flying with real airplane for airliner, once you collected minimum requirements for ATPL, you don't need to go for ATPL theory. You can upgrade your license from CPL to ATPL. After finishing second phase of our training, now it was time for real type rating. Type rating phase of your training maybe is the most important phase because I was assigned to 737 fleet. That's why I had to take 737 type rating and we only had one month. Can you imagine? You are taking flight training on 18 months and during the 17 months, you are spending your time with the small airplanes where you are not going to fly with them anymore unless you are interested in your private time. If you want to fly with them, that's a different story. But in one month, you are taking a training. That training will lead you for long years. I flew in 737 for more than four years. 
And for this whole four years, I got training for a month. That's why it's very short. And you need to show the examiner yourself that you are ready to fly 737 after a month. Can you imagine? You have a month to demonstrate your skills when it comes to flying jet. Flying jet is totally different than flying piston engine airplanes. First of all, jet airplanes are faster. Everything is just around you, just flying so fast. You need to be in the front of the airplane. That's why you shouldn't be behind. That's why you only have a month to improve yourself and have a transition from small airplane to a jet. Type ratings are done in full flight simulators. And a couple of them, of course, you got the basic things in uh, not moving simulators, but procedural wise, you can learn them in IPTs. That's okay, no problem. But most of the flight training in type rating are done in full flight simulators. Full flight simulators, it means that you go into simulator, you are inside the tube, but it demonstrates whole functionality of real airplane. You practice non-normal like engine failure, flight control problems, hydraulic problems, like landing gear problems. You need to demonstrate all these non functions while you are flying in full flight simulators. And of course, you need to learn how to land 737 for the first time. Our type rating was in Berlin, Germany. And imagine, I traveled all around the Germany more than a German. I was in Frankfurt, I was in Rostock, I was in Braunschweig, I was in Berlin for just training. I'm not even mentioning I flew all around Germany while under flight training. That was a really nice experience. After flying one month in simulator, finally I got qualifications of flying 737. Okay, let's pause here. Now I would like to make a quick recap to you guys what qualifications I had at that moment. Okay, I started flying. Then we flew with small airplanes. Then we went for ATPL theory lessons. Then we are credited for ATPL theory for our license for future use. Then we completed IFR flights, night flights, multi-engine flights. Then we got our ICAO English certification. And after having all of them, I got the qualifications of CPL, Commercial Pilot License A, which is for airplane. So I get CPL A credited with ATPL theory. And with this license, I apply for type rating in Berlin. After one month, I got my 737 type rating attached to my CPL license. That was my summary. Okay? With this license, I finished first part of my flight training, which is in Germany. What did I do next? I moved Turkey and I continued to transition course for Turkish Airlines. Okay, now we are going to talk about the second part of training. Once I finish my training in Germany, once I get my CPL license, my status in Turkish Airlines is upgraded to pilot. Before I was cadet pilot, now I'm pilot. There was a tra transition from student to a professional employee whole training in Turkey from a point that where we land to Istanbul and I start flying as an unrestricted first officer was almost four or five months. What we have done during this five month period is first of all we had to change our license because we had German license and there was an ESL license. In order to work in Turkey we needed to get a Turkish license. The transition from one license to another one was easy for us. Thank God, because Turkey is following European rules. That's why basically whole training, the requirements are same regardless of you are taking your training in Turkey or somewhere else in Europe. Then we needed to complete a couple of simulators in Turkish Airlines. That's why we had four or five different sessions in Turkish Airlines full flight simulators. Because the type rating that we had 
was specific for 737. But we needed to have Turkish Airlines specific courses as well. And we need to demonstrate Turkish Airlines SOPs, standard operational procedures. Because each company's SOPs are different from one to another, it can change. That's why we had to take five simulator sessions in Turkey. Uh, I'm not sure the exact numbers, uh, sorry about it, if I'm making mistake, if it is five or five, six, this is not important. The important thing is you need to take extra simulator for company conversion. After company conversion, uh, we finished all simulator session. Now it was time to fly with a real airplane for the first time. Can you imagine? After flying simulator, 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 small airplanes, we were so close to fly real airplane for the first time. And back then there was a huge queue in Turkish Airlines because training department was so busy. One day they just called me, are you ready? Now we had a slot for two pilots, now it's time for your base training. Base training is a training where you will demonstrate your skills, how you land 737 in real airplane. So we were six of us, Plus, we got three instructors with us. We flew from Istanbul to Samsung with real airplane. And each of us performed six landings and one go around. Can you imagine? I still remember my base training. Each student, six times landing, one time go around and being inside the pattern, seven times. You just turn 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 and you can guess the landings you know not the best one you are doing the first time i was so stressed when i jumped in i was like oh what am i going to do oh really i'm gonna fly for the first time after one two landings you are just getting used to it because it's exactly the same environment with the simulator to be honest landing in real airplane is way easier than the simulator itself you will understand my words once you fly in real airplane or if you're a pilot already please comment below so i can read your comments what do you think about my statement do you think that landing in real airplanes is easier than landing with simulator and we were like six of us seven approach each of us 42 times landing taking off 42 times my i i couldn't even you know think of my stomach i wanted to vomit that day because it's too much and once we give a break for refueling i smell the fresh air otherwise i was about to vomit after finishing base training i was officially ready to fly in real airplane the first part of real flying is called lifeless training which is line flight under supervision which means that you are first officer you are qualified to fly this airplane you completed all paperwork you are flying but at the same time you have a tri type rating instructor next to you checking and teaching you how to fly jet airplanes he's there to assist you to give the clues and at the same time help you there to improve your skills they are not teaching you from the beginning how you land or how you operate a jetliner. This training should be done in type rating. Now, did you understand how it was extremely important to succeed in a nice way in type rating? And you only have one month. That's why I was complaining about this training. I strongly believe that flight training should change because what we are following in flight training, like traditional way, belongs to 1940s, like after World War II. Now, people are most of the time flying with jetliners. We should design in a system way that we are flying more with real airplanes. Training should be based on this. For the life of training, you have some certain amount of sectors. For us, it was 40 sectors, which means that you have 40 sectors to demonstrate your capabilities before your check ride and convincing the examiner that you're operating safely in this airplane. And for the first six sectors, you are having a safety pilot, most of the time he's a first officer, sitting behind just in case. He's not there for you guys, he's there for captain, because you are not experienced pilot, right? If something happens to pilot, 
now he's there to make the airplane land that's why for the first six sectors there was a safety pilot behind me after demonstrating six successful landing safety pilot has been removed from my flights so next 36 sectors we just flew with the TRI and me I want to mention these flights are normal operating passenger flights there are passengers behind you are flying it's not like empty airplane you're flying so they are normal line flights after that finishing 34 sectors there was a point that you are tested final release guys imagine you had worked a lot you had studied a lot for 18 months in ABA initial flight training then you demonstrated of hard work for the next five months and you are a point away being released to line as a pilot no more training everyone is trusting you and this is really the last step in your career to be released to the line as an unrestricted pilot I still remember my first day it's still vivid I was so excited it's not because if I'm gonna pass the exam or not it's because you know you had really hard work for the last two years and it's the day now paying off you are gonna release to the line as a pilot and you are gonna officially start working as a pilot thanks God I finished my flight training in two years from a junior guy who has never flown an airplane before to a guy who is released to the line for 737 that was an amazing experience that's it I was a pilot now I was qualified to fly 737 at Turkish Airlines in 737 fleet I was so lucky and I was so grateful that I'm pilot uh, let me give some small um, information about it after finishing my training I was based in Istanbul Sabiha Gökçen Airport and I started my flying career there until I resigned from Turkish Airlines I stayed there for years I really enjoy my flying time at Turkish Airlines for a couple of reasons I learn how to fly I experienced many destinations I met really great captains that influenced my career a lot that summarized my flight training journey okay I would like to talk a little bit about being pilot I've got lots of questions about is there any way if I fail do you think that it's possible to fail can what happens if I cannot make it I'll spend lots of money I will resign from my job I don't know if I can make it guys everyone in the world believe me have excuses we should stop having excuses in our life okay I know it's a hard work I know you need to study a lot I know there are times that I had to study more than 12 13 hours after flying I know I had failed but at the end of the day look at me I am pilot for more than eight years I'm talking with you about my flight training which happened eight years ago that's why if you want there is nothing you cannot achieve and I would like to talk about statistics we were in that flight training school in Lufthansa with five different classes in that classes we were more than 100 students 100 cadets only one of us had failed but the rest has finished their training now they're about to be a captain some of them that's why there is no such a thing in the world I cannot make it if you study hard you will achieve your goals in your life if we talk about specific about aviation please do not bother yourself with these questions if I can make it if I can achieve it if you study and work hard you will do it take my example me as a cadet I failed once in my flight training in one of my IMC training actually it's not called 100 person failing it was not check it was just one flight before check and my trainer said to me okay better to take extra training before going there so let's make it sure that you are gonna pass from that exam that's it but what I have done I didn't take it as a oh how can I fail I take my leaking point 
and I made a chair flight. Chair flight means that literally you sit on top of a chair, close your eyes, put yourself in a real flying situation, then do everything in real time. I will do this, I will do this, then I will check this. This is called chair flight and I'm still doing it. That's really important in pilot's career. Still before each simulator, I'm making chair flight. That day, I made a chair flight as well. That made me pass from that thing. And until now, in Turkish Airlines, in my career, or Emirates, I haven't failed anything. But it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna fail anything. There might be a bad day that you cannot perform 100%. This is an absolutely normal thing. Guys, as a pilot, I can say that there are two types of pilot who has already failed and the second one who is waiting to be failed. Most of the pilots, as I told you before, are facing the beauty of failing something in aviation related career. It doesn't have to be a simulator. It doesn't have to be a real flight. It doesn't have to be an in-class event, no matter what. In aviation, we are highly regulated. Every step that you are performing in aviation is tested. That's why failing in aviation is a normal thing. The most important thing, do not keep failure on top of each other. Just once you have failed, that's okay. Just move on, study, 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 understand your points that you need to improve, then move on, do another one and try not to fail again. That's how it is. The most important thing here is motivation. If you have a motivation, there is no such a thing in the world that you cannot achieve, guys, okay? Let's recap what I have talked today. We started with AB initial flight training and I took each step on the way path through to my flight training. I was a rookie guy in 2014 and I was full qualified first officer in 2016. That was an amazing journey for me. The, my path is the same for the most of the pilots. If you choose the same way, most probably you are going to follow the same path. That was my journey. And I wanted to show you and I wanted to motivate you guys that you can do the same. If you like my video, I will be really appreciated if you hit the like button. And I want to hear you guys. What do you think about flight training? If you have any further questions, please drop a message down. I will read each of them. I will try to answer your questions as well. And just before leaving. I want to hear from you guys what kind of videos would you like to see and I would like to record videos based on your needs. Please feel free to send a message to me so I can learn what kind of videos you want me to create for YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Before going, do not forget to subscribe my channel and if you hit the bell button, you can get even notifications once I upload new videos. That's it for today. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.